Here are the rules to trade measure move strategy number one. Pivot A of the first measure move should be lower than the previous pivot low if going long and higher than the previous high if going short. Number two, the first measure move should have shallow retracement. Number three, the first measure moves CD range should be smaller than the AB range. Number four, enter the market as the second measure move forms pivot at C. Number five, the initial stop loss is placed one take away from the recent pivot. Number six, write out one pivot if needed until the minimum target is reached at CD equals AB of the second measure move. Let's take a look at some actual price charts. This is March Corn Daily. Oh, by the way, this is Q Charts, the charting service that I've been using for the last six or seven years. I am not endorsing them in any particular way. I do not have any financial interest in them. I'm simply a happy customer who likes their layout. Also, they have excellent click and drag Fibonacci applications as you'll see later. Also later, I'll give you a free website which you can get started with and they have intraday charts as well as daily and weekly charts that are updated throughout the day. To start, let's look at this part of the chart of corn. Let me open up this area so we can get a closer look. Using this strategy, you'll be trading the CD leg of the second measure move in a back-to-back -back scenario. But let's take a quick look at rule number one. This rule says that pivot A of the first measure move should be lower than the previous low if going long. Here's the pivot low and it is lower than this previous pivot low. Is this really a pivot low A? Now that we've seen B, C, and D, yes, it is a good point A. This first rule forces this pivot A to be a true low and be the first measure move and not some former pivot C of some other measure move. You can expect back-to-back -back measure moves, but there's no guarantee that there'll be a third or fourth in a series. Rule number two says first measure move should have shallow retracement. Here the BC drop against the AB range is right at 50%, so we'll count it here as shallow. A shallow retracement at pivot point C indicates a strong move in the making. The third rule says that the first measure moves CD range should be smaller than the AB range. There's point D. So in this case, CD is less than AB. Remember, with all measure moves, you can expect the CD move to be equal to AB, if not more. So if the CD move is just over here, then there should be some more move eventually to come as it works its way here, whether it be this way or simply this way. So a shortened CD move tells us that there should be more move to come. Rule number four says, enter the market as the second measure move forms a pivot at C. Now we know that the CD leg of the first measure move becomes the AB of the second. As we watch price action pulls back from little b, we will be focusing in on the potential pivot bar. Now, the potential pivot bar needs to have a pivot low that is not lower than the previous pivot low, which is A. So this qualifies as the potential pivot bar. Remember, it's not C yet until we see what happens to the following bar, how the following bar reacts and behaves versus this potential pivot bar will determine whether this potential pivot bar becomes the low of C. 
Let's take a closer look at this potential pivot bar. If the next bar opens between the high and the low of the potential pivot bar, then what we do is put a buy stop one tick above the high, right around here. So if and when the market rallies, you're in the market. You get filled as soon as pivot C gets confirmed. What if the market opens below the range of this pivot bar? Well, you don't want to buy the market on its way up from such a low. Because at best, it would make an outside bar, which means we may need the following bar to confirm. And this low here may have been below A already. So we don't want that scenario if it opens below the potential pivot bar's low. What if it gaps up? at the open. Do we want to buy it right there because of the strength? Well, I don't know. Price action may retrace and close the gap. Later on in the gap section, we'll cover gaps in details. But I would not buy it because you're not getting in at the best price. Ideally, this potential pivot bar should be somewhat short because you'd be getting it at a better price and you will have a better reward to risk ratio. In other words, you'll get in at the move earlier while shooting for the same profit target. Rule number five says to place the stop loss one tick below a recent pivot low. Well, now that we've formed a pivot low at C, that would be where it goes. So as soon as you see the next bar make a higher low, and a higher high compared to that potential pivot bar C, that makes that a pivot low and one tick below there is a protective sell stop. And again, that's why we wanted that bar to be short ideally. Rule says to write out one pivot if needed until minimum target is reached at CD equals AB. Usually, you'll see a move from C to D pretty much bar to bar straight up. If you don't see a bar to bar move and a pivot shows up, simply readjust your stop from one tick below C up to the next pivot low if that's what it takes to get to point D. So these are the rules to set up a trade, get in a trade, manage a trade, and get out of a trade. Well, let's look at more examples. Here you see a high that is higher than a previous high. Here's the first measure move. This is indeed an A, and between A and B you have an inside bar. We see the BC retracement being less than 50% of AB on the first measured move. The CD move is a lot smaller than the AB. In fact, point D is just slightly below point B. And with that good setup, we also have a very short potential pivot bar. And right here is the entry to go short. Right here is the protective buy stop. The market then falls very strongly to below D. Let's look at one more situation on this coin chart. Let's take a look at this area right up here. We have a higher high and a higher pivot low. Question is, is this pivot low lower than any previous pivot lows? Yes, lower than this and this and that. So this is our first measure move A, B, C, and D. Is C to D smaller than AB? Yes, it is. It is very small. And D is just slightly above B. Here we can buy when it pivots above this pivot bar, which means we'll be buying it right around here on this 
on this bar. And we write it up above somewhere around here. So here you see three trades in corn. And here's the weekly chart of T-bonds. Let's take a look at where our first measure move is. Here is A, B, up to C, down to D. You can see that the CD move is less than A, B, and the BC retracement is less than half of A, B. And this point A here is actually higher than previous pivot highs. So let's draw in the AB of the second measure move. There's AB up to C and confirmation to go short right over there. This pivot high gets confirmed. The market goes down lower highs, lower lows, bar to bar.